Each year, the Stichting Wetenschapsbeoefening of the Maastricht University rewards one or two master students from each faculty with a prize for exceptional academic performance. The prize is 500 euros, still euros, and an award certificate. We hope that these students will indeed support the political union. This morning, during a separate meeting, I awarded the student prizes for 21 bachelor students. I will now continue with the awarding of the master students prizes 2015. First of all, I would like to invite Milou Neuse to come forward. Milou. The Board of the Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences nominated you for this prize for your thesis entitled MNK1A and AMPK <laughs> Partners in Metabolic Adaptation. AMP activated protein kinase is an important energy sensor in the cell, which is activated upon it reduced energy status. This function of AMPK has been shown to play a crucial role in metabolism related diseases. You contributed to the research here and showed that potential targets for MNK1A and AMPK dependent transcriptional regulation in response to metabolic stress. Unraveling the molecular mechanism underlying this will provide insight into new pathways involved in adaptation to metabolic stress. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. And stay here for the moment. I will now invite the next one. I would like to invite Ariane Verhaag to come forward. The Board of the Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences nominated you for this prize for your thesis entitled Crosstalk between Skeletal Muscle and Endothelial Cells. Endothelial cells. Endothelial cells, perfect. <laughs> the Board of the Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences nominated you for this prize because tissue engineering of highly functional skeletal muscle holds promise for many applications, ranging from a variety of medical applications to cultured meat production. Your thesis stresses the necessity to accomplish vascularization of tissue engineers skeletal muscle constructs by incorporating endothelial cells and paves the way towards improving the level of myogenic differentiation and maturation of these constructs. Congratulations. The Faculty of Law nominated, no, sorry, I would now like to invite first of all Marie Doortje Overduin. <coughs> the Faculty of Law nominated you for your thesis entitled The FET and the TIP, or the TTIP, a critical assessment of divergent approaches used by the United States and the Netherlands. The inclusion of an investment chapter, including an investor to state dispute settlement, ISDS, mechanism in the transatlantic trade and investment partnership has fueled critical debate in civil society at both sides of the ocean. The TTIP negotiators have the daunting task of convening the different approaches towards the FET standard as applied by the United States and the Netherlands into one coherent investment chapter. Your thesis outlines three possible policy options available to policymakers in the European Union. Congratulations. <laughs> I would now like to invite Claudia Hamer to come forward. The Board of the School of Business and Economics nominated you for this prize for your thesis entitled Social Ventures in Reward-Based reward Crowdfunding. Social ventures are becoming an increasingly important part of society because of growing numbers of consumers are demanding sustainable and ethical market solutions. However, they struggle to receive early stage financing. Crowdfunding offers a suitable alternative for the financing needs of social ventures. Your thesis provides an innovative theoretical framework to investigate whether the social connectedness of a social venture and its endeavor to convince potential investors of its social mission influences the chance of receiving funds. 
Congratulations. Well done. Unfortunately, the next prize winner, Michael Pullman, cannot be with us two days, but I nevertheless would like to read out what the School of Business and Economics, why he was nominated and for which prize. The board of the School of Business and Economics nominated Michael for, his, for this prize for his thesis entitled Stationarity in Random Coefficient Autoregressive Models, Theory, Estimation and Testing. In his thesis, in his thesis Michael discusses random coefficient autoregressive models by presenting motivations for their use and offering an overview of empirical studies employing them. He not only presents new insights on the implications of the concepts discussed in the literature, but he also did a simulation study. Michael proposes a new non-parametric test using the smoothed state variables of the Kalman filter and bootstrapping confidence intervals. In simulations, this new test has better power than the existing one. Michael will receive the prize at another moment. Let me now invite Johanna Claire Garner to come forward. The Board of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences nominated you for this prize for your thesis entitled Britain, Undermining or Underpinning, Underpinning the CSDP. Johanna, your thesis analyzes Britain's contribution to the development of the European Union Common Security and Defence Policy, CSDP, and challenges the traditional understandings of Britain's somewhat awkward relationship with EU affairs. Although in the past a distant approach suited British interests, the international environment has changed. Cooperation is now crucial, making it increasingly evident that unless Britain alters its behaviour vis-à-vis the CSDP, and utilizes its strength in military affairs to foster a more cooperative European climate, British as well as European security will be at risk. Congratulations. Unfortunately, again, the next prize winner, Julia Kumher, cannot be with us today either. And again, let me read out quickly the nomination for Julia from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences for her thesis, Romantic Love in the Digital Age, Interpersonal Electronic Surveillance and Relationships, Visibility of Generation versus Facebook Users. Julia's research followed an ethnographic approach by discussing relevant literature within the field and by performing a small-scale study. Her thesis explores how young people in romantic relationships perceive the increased access to information and the new interaction possibilities as enabled by Facebook and which possible effects this may have on their relationship interactions, both online and offline. Again, Julia Kumher will also receive the prize at a later moment. I would now like to invite Schurt van Steenkiste to come forward. <laughs> the Board of the Faculty of Humanities and Sciences nominated you for this prize for your thesis entitled Designing Balanced Parametrized Multi-Wavelets via Lossless Systems. Short, your thesis is about multi-wavelets, a generalization of classical wavelet theory, allowing multiple waveforms to be used for signal processing simultaneously. When these waveforms are not properly balanced, repeated wavelet decomposition of a signal starts to lose meaningful interpretation and its application, such as signal denoising or signal compression, becomes less successful. In your thesis, directly applicable balancing conditions are derived, and it is proven that these conditions indeed yield polynomial preservation. It is demonstrated that designed first-order balanced multi-wavelets outperform arbitrary first-order balanced and unbalanced multi-wavelets in several applications. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
I would now like to invite Hannah Boykens to come forward. The Board of the Faculty of Psychology and Neuroscience nominated you for this prize for your thesis entitled Closing the Loop, Constructing a Cognitive Brain-Computer Interface Using Electroencephalography. Hannah, your study was a first step towards the development of a system for improving attentional abilities. Brain activity was recorded via electrodes placed on the head while participants were performing an, att an attentional task. The aim was to identify a brain signal that could predict how well participants would perform on the task. The brain signal that was found is now used in a neurofeedback training study. In this study, people receive information about their brain activity and are encouraged to manipulate their brain activity in such a way that they will improve on the attentional task. If successful, this paradigm can be further tested in patient populations with attentional deficits, such as ADAD, to improve their symptoms. Congratulations. Well done. And I think now it's time for a photo.